this is something you wake up and you realize it's never going to go away. It's it's a very different. It's a very different. 2 a.m. is a dark hour. I can tell you that <laughs> we're all. They did officially update the timeline to reflect Kaylee and Maddie getting home at 1.56 a.m. Um, I've been pushing that from the very beginning. I will say the one lingering frustration I have is the timeline. Um, I know it's semantics, but my sisters got home at 1.56. It wasn't 1.45. I know it might not seem significant, but when we're looking for camera, when we're looking for dash footage, when we're looking for any of those things, I do feel it, it is valuable and they did get home at 156. It was not 145. Right. I found neighbors ring and camera footage so that I can verify that the Uber driver took her home. parties, whether the kids were drinking or the college students were smoking pot or whatever, they're not going to get in trouble, police say. They just want the information about where Xana and Ethan were. 2 a.m. is a dark hour, I can tell you that. <laughs> Thank you. 
I was able to get a pretty good timeline on Kaylee and Maddie the night of um, from about 10, 15 until um, shortly before 3 a.m. Olivia Gonzalez says she discovered at least six calls from her sister Kaylee's phone between 226 and 252 made to a boyfriend in the early morning of November 13th. Hey guys, Mosca PD, come over here, talk to me. Mosca PD. Hey, is that beer? What's up? Is that beer in your hand? Yeah, I'm 21. You got any idea on you? Uh, I don't. Okay. I'll take it back to my apartment if you need. Okay. You're sorry. Huh? No, they just took off. I told them to stop, but I'm not going to push it. Hey, Mosca PD. Yeah, you got, you got you got your ID on you? I don't. Okay. I don't, yeah. I'm going to grab your info just because you got beer and you're walking around with it. No, it's, it's closed. But okay. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. I live like right there. I'll take it back if you need. No, we're just doing alcohol enforcement and running around with beer across the street. No worries. Sorry about that. You're good. Uh, what's your last name? Yeah, let, let, wait till dispatch comes gotcha. back and says we're good. Right, no worries. You guys taking off on me? I didn't hear you. Yeah, sorry, we thought you were talking. You all three turned around and I put my flashlight and you said, hey, come here. You guys all turned around and walked away. I thought it was just like a fake person. Honestly. Yeah, like, how many how many fake people are out here <laughs> that you've experienced? Or something, so I'm to yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> How's your night going? Oh, pretty good. That's good. Just trying to stay warm. Is that y'all's car right there? Yeah. Undercover. <laughs> well, just trying to save gas. They downgraded us from patrol cars. Gotcha. <laughs> they gave us hybrids to save on fuel. There you go. Smart You guys over it. Which apartment did y'all come from? I don't know. Um, I was at a friend's house. Yeah. I couldn't tell you the number. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you know the person hosting the party? Some guy named Matt, I think. Okay. Fifty-nine twenty-seven. Are you gonna be issuing? Copy, I'll bring him over and sit uh, right at one myself. All right, guys, come on over here. All right, if you guys all want to stand somewhere in this area, don't run off on me. Um, none of you guys are 21. Um, it's one thing to drink in an apartment where no one can see you. It's another thing for us to drive by and see you guys absolutely stumbling down the roadway. Okay, so likely what's going to happen because you're all underage. Um, what uh, what grade are you guys in? What year are you? Freshman. Freshman. You guys are all freshmen. Yeah. Okay. Police blotters and call logs are public record. Anybody can see them, and rightly so because taxpayers pay for that work product. And now some eagle-eyed followers of the Idaho quadruple murder case have picked up on one particular item from the police um, on the night that the four college kids were murdered. In fact. The incident in question happened at almost exactly the same time as the killings. I'm going to read to you what the police blotter actually says. Quote, there was an alcohol offense reported at 3.01 a.m. on November 13th, and that's the last night the kids were alive. The location, a field on Taylor Avenue. You can see it there. Sorry, guys. I know it's cold. Like I said, it's one thing to drink inside, I'm sure. I mean, we've all been to college. We've all been, we've all been there. But it's another thing to be very publicly intoxicated and kind of bring this conversation on you. So that being said, not the end of the world. So just an infraction, not a criminal charge, nothing like that. So yeah, Definitely yeah, just wait till you're 21 or do be smart about it. I'm not going to say I didn't drink in college. I did, but I can go staggering around the middle of the roadway, you know, afterwards, not saying you're a bad person or anything. 
but there's a way to do it, obviously, and there's a way to do it, not obviously. At 3.12 a.m., body camera video picks up what appears to be four people running under a street lamp in the background. Yeah. I'll say fresh or not, man. Moscow seventy seven. It's very confusing when you're looking at the body camera video, so hopefully we can give you some perspective. This is banned field. This is where the alcohol call came in. The young men were here in the field when the police first showed up. That is the Sigma Chi fraternity house uh, right there. So the police walked those young men across the street. This is Taylor Avenue, right to this spot right here. I was able to identify it because of the fire extinguisher. And they were standing in this spot, uh, the, the young men, and the body camera video was pointed this way. And it is over my shoulder where you could see very faintly uh, what looked like several people walking fast or almost running by in the background. And I wanna walk you over, Ashley, and give you a little more perspective. It was somewhere in this area right here. And we can tell because we analyze these lights of this little uh, apartment building. It was somewhere right in this area. There's another big apartment building here. The question you might be having is how close is this to the house where the murders happened? Mo is gonna point in that direction. Our producer is up there. She's gonna flash a flashlight, Ashley. You see that flashlight flashing right there? That is right yeah, in front of the house where the murders happened. Oh. It's that close and it appears, again, it's so hard to see it in that body camera video, but when we zoom in, it does appear that the figures are walking slash running uh, from the direction of where the house is, where the murders happened. At first, I thought they were just walking down Taylor Avenue uh, but when I got out here and really looked at everything, um, it appears they might actually be coming somewhat from the direction um, of, of the house. And then just point to what direction they're, they're headed from what I'm looking at you straight on, just point the direction they were headed. Okay, let me show you again. So up there on the hill, that's where, where the flashlight is flashing. That is where the house is, where the murders happened. It appears they were coming from that direction um, and that they were going this way back towards Bandfield, uh, back towards the Sigma Chi house where, um, where the police were. And we'll walk you back, Ashley. And and I've been telling you the last couple of days, there's um it's it's a dense area. You know, when you just look at the shot of the house, you don't realize that all of these um houses and apartment buildings are around. This is like a little walkway that the students use to get down to the frat houses. And then this is a little road right here, Ashley. And you see here is the house. This is the house where I the murders happened. Had, um, so I had no walk. idea. Wow. I mean, short walk, that's like 55 seconds. I mean, they could have gotten home so quickly yeah. from that frat house. I had no idea it was that close, Brian. It's, that's remarkable. Very close.
through our tips, through our leads, some of the evidence that came in, we start to identify patterns. Police now revealing they're going through 22,000 cars that match the search criteria of the one they're looking for, a 2011 to 2013 white Hyundai Elantra, like this. The car resembling this grainy image they're now investigating, captured on a gas station security cam, taken around 345 the morning of the murders. Employees at that gas station telling ABC News they told investigators the car took this route, heading in the direction of the victim's home, but they don't know where it went once it left the camera's view. Officers believe the occupants of the Elantra they're searching for have information critical to the investigation and are pleading to the public for help. If we get the word out there, hey, maybe your neighbor has one in the garage that they don't drive very often. Maybe um, the, there's one that's just not on the registration database. Let us know. We have looked at um, massive amounts of um, video footage, especially in the critical camera areas. And um, we've looked at the 24 hours prior to and 24 hours after of those. And now we're look, extending that out even further to other cameras and other time, time frames. We take the totality of the situation. We try to make the best um, bit of information we can with everything that comes in and then we make our decision off of that. So at this time, I'm not going to expand upon that. Um, but like I've said, we do have a suspect out somewhere, and we are looking for that individual to uh, solve this. We try to take that information. We try to make the best educated decision we can. We uh, review that as a team with our um, detectives, along with our prosecutors, along with the university, and we try to make that best um, decision on that. Master, please. Come back here. Hey, is that beer? What's up? Is that beer in your hand? 